Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Now, Yeti is more than just cups and coolers. They also have a cool line of bags and luggage. Yeti says they're submersible and airtight. Today, we're going to put them to the test. I'm going to West Texas to a sand line. I'm going to take these bags with me and I'm going to put them to the test in a Texas size durability test. We're going to see if they can keep the sand and the water out and if they can protect my camera gear and all my personal stuff. The 50 duffel had plenty of room for my three day trip. I had steel toe boots in there, plus a little bit of camera gear like a tripod head and a handle and my drone. <laughs> On the outside here, we've got this material that Vietti calls thick skin. It is hard to describe what it is, but it feels super durable. The straps here, they work two ways. There's this way here, and then when you stand it up on end, you've got the backpack straps there for wearing on your back. Both modes are really quite comfortable. On the back, these straps provide enough padding and then in carrying mode, the contours that they've built these straps with make this section here where you're carrying the duffel really comfortable. All the buckles and connections here are just super, super high quality. And then all around the bag, you've got these quick grab handles. So from any angle, you can get access and grab this bag and get it on your back or get it in your hands to get going. On the bottom, they call this an EVA molded bottom, and it's a strong waterproof bottom, so your bag is not gonna get punctured, it's not gonna leak. So that's the outside of the bag. On the inside, we've got two mesh pockets, one on each side, and these are quite deep. Comes with Yeti zipper lubricant. I haven't quite figured out why and when I'm gonna use this. Now when I saw the Yeti 28 backpack, I thought this was going to be the perfect bag for carrying around my camera gear. But just as quickly, I realized that without dividers, this really isn't set up as a camera bag right out of the box. So the solution I came up with was to grab a spare piece of foam I had that I could cut out to fit the inside. And it worked pretty good. It had room for my camera and lens, an extra lens, and my shotgun mic and there was a little space down the bottom where I put a single packing cube and then the front pocket here was where I put batteries and stuff stuff I was going to need quick access to throughout the day you got the U-Dock down the bottom here which is the end of your hydrolog zipper the thick skin shell on the outside is made of high density nylon you've got your EVA molded bottom which is strong and waterproof to keep all the elements out from that angle you've got the dry haul straps here the straps on the Penga 28 backpack are really easy to adjust even with one hand and they're very comfortable and lots of quick grab handles around the outside of the bag. On the inside, there's a stowaway pocket there for a laptop. And then you've got a nice mesh zipper pocket here. Thank you. The trip to Texas was pretty smooth. The backpack went under the seat in front of me and the duffel went up in the overhead compartment. I arrived in Texas just in time to see the Texas Rangers win the World Series. And then it was off to the hotel room and set the alarm for an early start the next day. So day one in Texas, we went to the sand line. First thing I did was I made sure the zippers were done up perfectly on both bags. This is the toughest and highest performing leak proof zipper in the world. It's got the U-Dock. And the U-Dock is where the zipper ends and becomes airtight. And you really can tell. It kind of locks in there. That sucker is airtight. The backpack was on my back all day and I was in and out of it to get batteries and the drone and other bits and pieces. I had easy access to all of my gear and the zipper gave me a lot of confidence that when I was putting the bag on and off the ground that it wasn't going to be getting sand inside. It was great knowing I had an airtight bag on my back all day protecting my gear. But just to make sure, we put the bags through a durability test that you could only do at a sand mine. For the durability test, we took both bags, threw them in the sand on a giant conveyor belt, then launched them off the end to tumble down to the bottom of a mountain of sand to see if any sand got in them. Now that stack of sand is about a hundred feet high. 
and it's feeding thousands of pounds of silica sand off of that conveyor belt. The duffel tumbled all the way to the bottom of the pile and landed in kind of a slurry of sand and water. That one corner got buried pretty good and so did my feet. Shit. It's the quicksand. It's the quicksand. So after tumbling all the way down the sand pile and landing in a wet mess at the bottom, that seemed like a pretty good test. The backpack got stuck at the top. In the time it took to go and retrieve it, started getting covered up by sand coming off the conveyor belt. Both of these bags passed with flying colors. The backpack, I had taken my camera gear out before I launched it, but there was no sand inside, so even if my camera gear was in there, I think it would have been fine. The duffel, after tumbling all the way down that sandy mountain and landing in the puddle at the bottom, no sand. Cleaning off the duffel bag with this wire brush left really no marks, so these bags can definitely take a beating. And I'm going to use them a lot, so we'll see how they perform over time. When I got home, everything went into the shower to test Yeti's claim that these bags are waterproof. The only thing to do, really, was to just chuck them in there and start hosing them off. I made sure to get really good coverage with the shower, testing out the zippers and the U-Dock specifically to see if we could get any water inside. And then I just let them sit there for like 20 minutes. They just had a shower, both of these, and uh, look, let's see how waterproof they really are. That's the test. I'm going to open this up. Here's the look inside the bag. There is no water in this bag anywhere. See? I mean, it is absolutely bone dry. I mean, uh, you're not going to be getting any liquid in either of these bags. I think that's the key right there. That U-lock system seems to really seal the end of the zip up, which is probably going to be the place you'd be most likely getting water if it was going to come in. And there's just nothing there. Okay, so in the final tally, the Yeti Panga 28 backpack and the 50 duffel are definitely built to keep the outside outside. These bags are tough and definitely airtight from the testing we did. They're comfortable to travel with. They fit into the airplane perfectly as carry-on luggage or a personal item, so that's a nice bonus. The buckles and the straps and the zippers and everything you reef on on these bags just feels super solid like it's going to last a long time. Packability was fine for both bags. Like I said, this didn't perform perfectly out of the box as a camera bag. But as a day trip bag or a carry-on bag under the airplane, it's perfect. And it's got the added bonus of being airtight, waterproof, and submersible if you want. The Yeti 50 duffel performed really well on my three-day trip. I like how simple it is on the inside. There's two zip mesh pockets that you can use, but other than that, it's just a big empty space. I would definitely say this bag combo is the perfect combo or rugged outdoor travel of any kind where you need to keep the elements out of your stuff. Now, if you want to see what happens to these bags when they get completely submersed underwater, watch this video right here.